Are you tired of waiting all that time for your shells to reload? Do you want to be able to drive at high speeds? Well, I have the solution for you. It's called Crew Skills. Today, I will explain what all the Crew Skills of War Thunder do. These skills are extremely useful. Many players forget about their Crew Skills and it really affects their performance. Please note that I have created subtitles and timestamps for this video. So, if you can't understand what I'm saying, make sure to turn subtitles on. And if you want to skip to a certain skill, go ahead and click on the timestamps in the description. There are two main types of crew skills. The one that all the crew has, and the ones that are unique to all the crew members. But first, let me explain how the crew skills actually work. You can upgrade your crew skills by spending crew XP points. You earn crew XP points by either playing the game with that vehicle, or buying them with golden eagles. Each crew skill has its own cost of crew XP points. The more you upgrade a skill, the higher the cost for that skill. Whenever you upgrade a certain skill, the crew level goes up. The crew level is a number that shows how experienced your crew is. After you get a certain amount of crew levels, you can upgrade your crew to be an expert or ace. Upgrading crew costs a lot of civil alliance at higher tiers, but it's worth it. Expert crew gives you a plus 3 bonus for all the skills. An ace crew requires more levels, but it gives you a plus 5 bonus. Now, for the crew slots. Each slot on your lineup has its own crew. These crew members are trained for a certain vehicle. When you select the vehicle to go into a slot, the crew gets trained for that vehicle. Training crew costs civil lines, but if you already have a trained crew, it's free. If you upgrade your crew to be an expert or ace crew, they will only be expert or ace on the slot you train them on, so choose your lineup carefully. The first group of crew skills we will be looking at are the generic skills. These are skills that all the crew members have. These include keen vision, field repair, agility, and vitality. The first one we will be looking at is keen vision. Keen Vision allows your crew to spot tanks further away. This skill is only useful in arcade battles however, since in RB and Sim, there are no red markers on top of tanks and planes. However, it does give you these red arrows on the side of your screen. These arrows are directing to where a target is. This is thanks to your crew being able to spot tanks. The higher you upgrade the skill, the more arrows you can see. The explanations I will be giving on Keen Vision are going to be on arcade, so feel free to skip to the next crew skill if you only want to hear about RB or Sim. Upgrading Keen Vision gives you a variety of boosts. You can split them into two groups, Detection and Identification. Detection allows you to see an enemy and create a red marker over their tank. Identification allows you to see exactly which tank it is. So, for example, if you see a tank far away, it will say T-34, but if you have Keen Vision upgraded with the extra identification, it will say the exact model of the tank, for example, T-3485. The first parameter is Absolute Detection. Absolute Detection allows you to detect players in your line of sight but the downside is that it will only detect players in your line of sight and not players around you. So you need to turn your camera around to spot players effectively. The base stat for absolute detection is 97 meters, so you can spot players 97 meters away. Upgrading keen vision by half a skill level gives you an extra meter of absolute detection. The highest absolute detection you can get is 215 meters. The second parameter is move below line detection. This parameter is similar to absolute detection, but instead of being able to spot players where you're looking, it spots players in the direction you're moving. So, if you're driving down a road, your driver can detect players on that road. The base stat is 235 meters of detection, and upgrading by half a skill levels give you an extra 3 meters of detection. The highest movement of line detection you can get is 523 meters. The third parameter is line of sight detection, also quite similar to the previous two skills. Instead of spotting players with your camera or driver, you can spot players with your gun scope or your binoculars. This skill has an interesting feature to go along with it though. If you use your binoculars, the range goes up by 3 times how much you upgraded Keen Vision. So, if you upgrade Keen Vision by 3 levels, and if you use your binoculars, it counts as upgrading by 9 levels. The base stat is 563 meters of detection, and upgrading by half a skill level gives you an additional 7 meters of detection. The highest line of sight detection you can get is 1251 meters. The 4th through 6th parameters are identification skills. These are not very useful since they only let you know which, exactly which tank you're facing, but you can easily destroy the tank without knowing exactly which tank it is, and experienced players can identify which tank they're facing anyways. It is going to affect your gameplay knowing you're facing a T-44-100 instead of a regular T-44. Here are the stats of the parameters if you're interested. The last parameter is aircraft detection. It allows you to detect aircraft in the sky. The difference between this parameter and the other parameters is that aircraft detection can detect planes 360 degrees around you, so you don't have to turn your turret or look at the aircraft. This parameter is quite useful for anti-air vehicles in RB as well, since the red arrows can help a lot. The base stat for aircraft detection is 4.27 km, and upgrading by how a skill level gives you an additional 0.05 km of detection. The highest aircraft detection you can get is 9.5 km. 
Scouting vehicles with the improved optics modification gives all keen vision parameters a 30% boost. If you want to learn more about keen vision and other modifications in War Thunder, click the info card above to see my modification in War Thunder explained video. Upgrading keen vision to the max will cost you 2032 clear XP points. Field repair decreases the amount of time needed to repair the modules of your tank. The maximum time you need to repair varies from tank to tank. So on something like a T95, the maximum time is quite high, but on a light tank such as an M22, it's pretty low. The nice crew and all the skill levels upgraded with maximum leadership, you can cut the time needed to repair in half. Upgrading field repairs of the max will cost you 3060 crew XP points. Agility is how fast a crew member can replace a fallen comrade in a tank. Upgrading agility by half a skill level decreases the time needed by 0.04 seconds. It takes 13 seconds to replace a crew member with a stock crew, but with an 8 crew and all the agility skills upgraded with maximum leadership, it takes 8 seconds. Upgrading agility to the max will cost you 30,060 skill XP points. If you were paying attention to the video, you would have noticed that upgrading the skill levels of the past 3 skills doesn't really affect their outcome. The real difference comes with the qualifications. As you can see, upgrading to an expert crew gives you a much higher boost to the skill than the skill levels. This is why qualifications are so important. But something I've noticed is that this has encouraged you to distribute your crew XP points. You see, in the last 3 skills, the last sentence was, average skill value of the crew counts. So, if you upgrade one crew member's skill to the max, the total skill of your entire crew will be about one crew level. This means that upgrading only one crew member is pointless and expensive. By distributing your crew XP points to all of your crew, it reduces the cost of crew XP points and allows you to upgrade your crew to get an expert or ace faster. The last generic skill we will be looking at is Vitality. This one speaks for itself. It increases the amount of health your crew members have. This is the only generic skill that doesn't take the average number of all your crew members, so you should upgrade this skill on the member that is most vulnerable to the enemy. Upgrading half a skill level will give you an additional 5% health to your crew member. If you have all the skill levels upgraded with an innate screw and maximum leadership, you can have a total of 200% health. Upgrading Vitality to the max will cost you 3093 crew XP points. The driver is one of the two essential crew members of your tank. He allows you to move. The unique skill of the driver is tank driving. Upgrading tank driving affects how fast the driver switches gears and applies the brake. That means that it improves acceleration and responsiveness when turning. Tank driving has two parameters, braking time and gear shifting time. Don't confuse braking time with braking distance. Braking distance is how far the tank goes before fully stopping. Braking time on the other hand is how fast your driver can hit the brakes so it doesn't change how fast your tank can stop. Braking time does affect responsiveness when turning however, so it affects the time between you pressing the button to turn and the driver turning. The default braking time is 0.14 seconds and upgrading tank driving by one skill level decreases the time by 0.01 seconds. With an A screw and all the tank driving skills upgraded with maximum leadership, it can be reduced down to 0.7 seconds. Gear switching time is how fast your driver can change the gear and accelerate further. If you don't upgrade the skill, your driver won't switch gears fast enough and he'll be stuck on the same speed until he does switch the gears. The default gear switching time is 1 second, but with an A screw and all the tank driving skills upgraded with maximum leadership, it can reduce down to 0.1 seconds. Quite a significant difference. Overall, tank driving is one of the most useful skills if you're in tanks such as the M18. The driver will be more experienced and will allow you to maneuver through the battlefield with ease. Upgrading tank driving to the max will cost you 1020 core XP points. The next crew member we will be looking at is the gunner. He's the second essential crew member of your tank. He allows you to shoot and turn your turret. The gunner has two unique skills, targeting and range finding. Targeting affects the speed and precision of the gun's traverse and elevation. It affects how fast your turret can turn and how accurate you can aim. Targeting has three parameters, targeting quality, targeting speed, and targeting vertical speed. The targeting quality is like the adjustment of fire modification of crew skills. It improves fire accuracy. An experienced gunner can hit directly where he aimed at. Upgrading targeting by half a skill level gives you an additional 4% to targeting quality, and fully upgrading targeting with an ace crew and maximum leadership gives you 100% targeting quality. This is one of the most important crew skills for tank destroyers and generally for anybody who enjoys sniping. Targeting speed and targeting vertical speed affects how fast your gunner can turn the turret. Targeting speed is for both horizontal and vertical turning, but targeting vertical speed is only for vertical turning. An experienced gunner can turn the turret both vertically and horizontally at the same time, but an inexperienced gunner needs to turn the turret horizontally first and then fix the vertical accuracy. The turret turning speed depends from vehicle to vehicle, so upgrading the skill levels is not the same for each tank. The targeting skill also affects ATGM carriers. Upgrading targeting affects the responsiveness of the missiles, so you can guide them easier. Upgrading targeting to the max will cost you 1020 crew XP points. Range finance is one of the most important skills in any tank. 
It allows you to know precisely how far your target is. There are a lot of different parameters, but they are very basic. They're all about the distance you can range find with how much air there is. So, the first one means that you can range find up to 50 meters with an error of 5 meters. That means if you range find the distance of a tank 50 meters away, it will give you the distance with an error of less than 5 meters, so it is very precise. The further you go, the more error you'll get. If you upgrade all the range finding skill levels with an A screw and maximum leadership, you can find the range of tanks up to 1.2 kilometers away with an error of 100 meters. But if you have the rangefinder modification installed, the rangefinder skill will be useless. The rangefinder installed in your tank will automatically find the range for you, so your crew won't have to calculate it. So if your tank either has a rangefinder or the laser rangefinder modification installed, this skill shouldn't be your priority. Here are the rest of the stats if you're interested. Upgrading rangefinder to the mass will cost you 1020 crew XP points. The loader is the third most important crew member of your tank. He loads the shells into the breach. He will almost always be replaced by another crew member if he gets knocked out, but the essential crew members are always the first ones to get replaced since the tank cannot operate without them. The loader has one unique skill, Weapon Reloading. The Weapon Reloading skill is the skill that most players upgrade first, and rightfully so. This skill is one of the most important skills if not the most important skill out of them all. It decreases the time needed to reload. The time varies from tank to tank though, but upgrading all the skills with an A screw and maximum leadership can decrease the time needed by up to 23%. But something that many players forget is that this skill has no effect on tanks with an auto loader since the tank loads the shells for them. So make sure to check if your tank has an auto loader before upgrading this skill. But this is one of the most expensive unique skills though, causing you 3060 crew XP points to upgrade to the max. Up next is the commander. He's the one that tells everybody what to do. He's the fourth most important crew member of your tank. The commander has one unique skill, leadership. Leadership is a skill that many players neglect, but it is one of the most important skills you can get. This skill increases the skill of the other crew members, but it is one of the most expensive skills out of them all. Upgrading leadership to the max will cost you a total of 4,021 crew XP points. Upgrading leadership by half a skill level gives your crew a 1% bonus to all of their skills, and the maximum leadership you can get is 10%. This skill is unaffected by the qualifications, so upgrading your crew to be an expert or ace doesn't change it. The radio operated gunner's least important crew member or your tank. It doesn't serve much purpose on the game since you can't fire the whole mountain machine guns. The purpose of the radio operator gunner is to give coordinates to the artillery team for an artillery strike and replace other crew members in your tank. The radio operator gunner has three unique skills. Artillery targeting accuracy, artillery strike calling time, and radio communication. Artillery targeting accuracy is how accurate the artillery team can fire. The base targeting accuracy is 58 meters and the barrage will go all around the place and not hit your target. This can be useful when the enemy team is capturing a point and you want to deal as much damage as possible in a large area. With a max out crew, the artillery barrage will be more accurate. Instead of 58 meters, it will be 45 meters. This is useful for hitting one target instead of multiple ones. Upgrading artillery targeting accuracy to the max is very cheap, only costing you 541 crew XP points. Artillery strike calling time isn't how much you need to wait between artillery barrages, but it's the time between new Kong and artillery strike and the shells being fired. Upgrading skill will allow the radio operator gunner to give the coordinates to the artillery team faster, thus making the barrage faster too. The difference between a base crew and the max style crew is small, only being 3 seconds of difference. Upgrading this skill to the max is also quite cheap, costing you 541 crew XP points. Radio communication is a skill that is mainly useful for arcade battles, but it does have an effect for RB as well. In arcade, it highlights all enemies around you that have been spotted by allies, even allied planes, with a default range of 250 meters. In RB, however, it shows bitters on the side of your screen when an ally detects a player. Both effects can be upgraded up to 500 meters. Upgrading radio communication to the max will cost you 1,020 crew XP points. The last crew member we'll be looking at is the mechanic. He's in a part of your tank crew though, he works in the hangar. The mechanic has two unique skills, repair speed and repair rank. Repair speed is not how fast you repair in combat. Many players think that this affects how fast you can repair. That skill is a field repair, and all your crew members have it. Repair speed is how long the free repairs take. If you're rolling out on serial lines, this skill might be useful, but it's one of the least useful skills you can upgrade. Upgrading repair speed to the max will cost you 1322 crew XP points. Repair rank is a mechanic skill of repairing. Upgrading skill by one skill level lets you repair vehicles in rank 1, and upgrading these to the max will let you repair your vehicles in rank 7. On every vehicle, this skill is upgraded by one crew level automatically, so you don't need to upgrade it to repair tier 1 vehicles. Upgrading repair rank to the max will cost you 1,340 crew XP points. Now to understand how the crew skills work, 
Here's the order you should upgrade the skills on most tanks. Tank driving, weapon reloading, unless your tank has an all loader, leadership, field repair, range finding, unless your tank has a range fire modification, targeting, vitality, agility, radio communication, keen vision, artillery targeting accuracy, artillery strike calling time, repair rank, and finally, repair speed. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you think I missed something, leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel for more War Thunder content. We also have a War Thunder squadron now. You can invite to join the Dojo squadron and will get accepted. We're welcoming any new members of the squadron. Also, shout out to Artistic Killing for finding me in a match. Join my Discord server for updates and more. Anyways, see you in the next video.